Hey guys, Andrew here. Just want to do an informal behind the scenes, show you my studio real quick. I'm going to be moving in the next month and so I'm going to be just tearing everything down. So I thought for posterity's sake, I'll do a setup tour of my YouTube studio. I think the main lesson that you'll be able to see is that you really don't need to invest a lot of money or have tremendous resources to make good tabletop reviews, which is really what my focus is on here at this channel. I hope you enjoy it. Okay guys, I'm going to show you just my tabletop equipment first, and I do apologize for the shaky cam. I am just going to do this handheld to keep it real and just to keep it moving. First thing up is my Canon 60D equipped with a Sigma 18-35 to 1.8 millimeter lens. This has really been critical for a lot of the cool bokeh shots and uh, a lot of the more... I guess improved camera work that I've been going for, especially in the last couple months. I am shooting this on an older Manfrotto uh, fluid video head. This is the 501. So it's a, a fairly large and heavy video head and I have taken it out of my studio to do some of the footage of me in different locations or some of the footage of the different products I've used in different locations. This is also just a stainless Manfrotto uh, tripod here. It is the 3001N. Uh, it's an Italian tripod. Manfrotto is just really high quality. Wrangler Star is actually the guy that got me clued into Manfrotto products. Um, I heard about Sigma lenses from the photography community and a lot of videographers do really like these um, great wide open aperture Sigma art lenses. The 60D is actually something I'm probably going to replace. It was just a, a really great deal at the time and I've really enjoyed using it. But uh, And I have this on a Topos Design. Um, I don't even know what you call those things. So uh, this is probably right here around $1,200 worth of equipment. I did buy a lot of this used, obviously, the Manfrotto tripod is an older unit, the 60D is an older unit, and the Sigma, I actually bought used off of eBay, just bought it from a seller that had a great feedback rating, and that saved me a ton of cash as opposed to buying all new stuff. I do intend to eventually replace this with an 80D, but that is not something I'm in any hurry for because this has been serving my needs just fine. Okay, next thing I want to show you is some of my desktop tripods. I use just this generic arm tripod for when I want overhead shots with my iPhone. I still sometimes incorporate shots with my iPhone 6 Plus, believe it or not. And for that I do use an Archon head on these little tripods. Really sturdy, really strong string. This is just a handy secondary thing. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. This is the flexible tripod that came with the Archon uh, iPhone head. It's just a basically a Gorillapod clone. I actually used this um, old Manfrotto miniature tripod for some of the uh, DSLR shots on location. So like for example, this was really handy for me when I was shooting some of my Red Wing video boot shots in the store because I could actually set this up on a shelf. It's really sturdy and can easily hold a uh, digital SLR camera. It's got a video head here. Let me show you, sorry, a ball head here and uh, works really well for digital SLRs. Sometimes if I want to get other shots that I can't get with these two other tripods, I do have a slightly larger cheap Targus tripod that I can use. All right, as far as my audio goes, for my lav mic, I just use the Rode Smart Lab Plus. It's been working really well for me. I do sometimes plug it directly into my digital SLR with this converter here. This is the Rode Video Mic Go. This is their latest and smallest sort of um, shotgun style mic. It isn't powered. I've sort of not been happy with the results of this. It's pretty quiet and and compared to having a lav mic it, it pretty much rarely is needed but I haven't gotten rid of it yet because I'm still trying to get more experience with it before I decide I don't need it. For all my voiceover stuff I am still using the blue snowball. I have just a generic pop filter here to deal with those P's. I have a spring-loaded adjustable arm for the microphone. Honestly, the spring-loaded arm has got to be one of the best investments I ever made because it was so annoying using the factory tripod with this blue microphone. Now I can get it in right where I need it or move it out of the way very easily in between shots. Typically my workflow is shooting video footage first and then doing the voiceover. Sometimes I do voiceover while I'm shooting the shot, but not very often. And uh, it is really great having this just uh, able to be positioned very quickly. Uh, that was one area where I was wasting a lot of time was getting my microphone set up 
and uh, this is more or less taking care of that completely. I do intend to eventually upgrade to something from Rode. Their UT USB microphone looks really good. As you can see here, I do have this set up for a uh, direct plug into my iPhone. Believe it or not, I still do all the editing of my videos on my iPhone. I um, just haven't gotten to the point where the extra um, tools needed on a computer uh, program are really something that I feel is pertinent. The only thing that I could be doing on a computer that I would be doing differently here is you know, more precise audio editing and color correction. And no one ever complains about color correction, so I'm not worried about it. For my main lighting setup for the tabletop reviews, what I've got here are three umbrella lights. Basically have a, a modified three-point lighting setup here with umbrellas. Actually, what you'll see back here is I've got just a, kind of like a, a, a shop light set up with a light bulb that has uh, a daytime color temperatures. And here I've got light bulbs that are basically the same sort of deal. Uh, they're outdoor lights, but set up for a daytime color temperature so that the uh, color correction isn't too crazy. And uh, this was another very cheap early investment. I've been using this light set up for, well, easily two years now. And I haven't felt the need to improve it because uh, no one's complaining. So as long as it gets to a point where people are happy with what they see, I don't feel the need to change it. For times when I'm getting in front of the camera down here in the basement, I do have a couple mini box lights. These are LED lights that have a color temperature that you can see is also just sort of a daylight temperature. These have been pretty handy. They just have a little switch. They're very portable. And I honestly haven't used them a lot because I found it's actually more satisfying to me to just shoot in natural light if I'm getting in front of a camera. And so I'll just go to another part of my house. But yeah, I've seen a few videos where I'm in front of the camera with these. Sometimes even when I'm shooting in daylight, I like to have the use of some of these supplementary LED lights just to make sure that I'm lit up uh, even more than my surroundings. Sometimes surroundings are very irregular. So these are a couple of Olympia lights of uh, different wattages that are rechargeable, work really well, they're very portable, so like there have been times where I've used these outside, there's no plugs, they're just big batteries and then you recharge them. And the advantage of that is, again, just to, if you're in front of the camera, or if you're trying to get something on camera in natural light that isn't perfectly well lit, this can just be that little bit of extra light that can make a difference. I've got just a generic tripod here set up for when I need to shoot things with my iPhone, like at the beginning of this video here. Again, I have one of these Archon iPhone heads that work really good with the iPhone 6 Plus, which is still what I'm using. I, on the back wall here, I've just got some random phone accessories, some other random stuff like um, boot conditioners and random things. I keep some of my boots down here keep uh, most of my boxes down here. I do get rid of a lot of my boxes, try to recycle as much as I can, but some of the stuff I like to hang on to in case I uh, intend to ever store some of the stuff in boxes. Use this white pad here just again to bounce light off sometimes in certain situations. It's nice to have that. Sometimes I'll use that as a background. And I do have a variety of backpacks and different kinds of equipment for moving stuff around here. It's um, not something I'm going to go through in detail here, but I've got a variety of uh, camera bags that I sometimes use. Uh, I've got my my Vanguard Reno backpack uh, down here, which I've previously reviewed. Really like that. Lately, I've been using this Mountain Smith bag for my camera equipment. It's just a little bit bigger than the Vanguard. Keeps all of my stuff really well contained. Really high quality, sturdy bag. I am going to be doing a review of this. It's been working out really well, and I like having it right here, so I can basically pack this stuff up and grab it if I'm going to go for a run. Um, to shoot any footage and I can just leave it open here when I'm working on a video and have quick access to stuff. Got some of my watches stored here. I use uh, Nightcore chargers for powering my flashlights. Just a random miscellaneous box of stuff. Other tools that are really helpful for me. Um, definitely love having one of these uh, digital calipers. Uh, I've got uh, Cape Cod cloth for polishing metals got different little things like a, a lope here and different watch um, little watch tools I use that for all kinds of stuff actually got notes here on my back wall I just um, have a few things that help me just kind of stay inspired I've got some uh, of the channels that I've been subscribed to and fans of for the longest time Nut and Fancy of course um, uh, Such Double Zero 
the late Boy Scout, he was really supportive to me early in my YouTubing. I think back, back when I had like 100 subs, he said some stuff to me very encouraging when I was commenting on his videos, letting him know that I was starting a new channel. So I've always really been grateful to him. Some brands that I like here and just some random stuff just so that I've got something to look at when I am working on a video. My father-in-law actually refinished this vintage axe head for me and gave it to me as a birthday present so I keep it down here just because it's super awesome. I almost forgot here on my desk I wanted to show you what I usually take my notes in. I don't script my reviews but I do write outlines in this Rhodia notebook I've been using for years and I'm almost to the end of it finally. All I usually do is, I'll just give you an example, this is my Omega Railmaster review, write the structure of the interview, make the notes that I want to make, um, and I sometimes keep track of other things like um, how many subs that I have at the time of making the video. That's one way of gauging along with the date um, how much my channel is growing. So that's been pretty interesting for me to keep track of. I have atrocious handwriting and I always just uh, like writing things down. It makes things for me a lot more firm in my mind and I don't have to usually refer to my notes when I'm actually cutting the audio tracks. Once I've got things shot, they're either already on my phone because I've shot it with my phone, as in this case, or if they're shot on my digital SLR, I just put them right on my phone. Usually what I've been using is these SanDisk Extreme Pros. They uh, have a really fast write speed, and that means that they transfer really well, and I haven't had problems with uh, recording basically HD footage on the digital SLR. So they've worked out really well, haven't had any failures. For new people getting started to YouTube, the advice I've always given is figure out three-point lighting. That's really easy to do and it doesn't cost much money. And then work on getting good audio. The investment in the blue mic was really a worthwhile investment a couple years ago and I think when I get even into a nicer mic that'll be something that I'll consider a worthwhile investment at that time. Now that I've had a little bit of discretionary income as a result of my YouTube earnings getting a nicer camera and a quality lens even more than the camera which is already pretty uh, outdated has been another way for me to really step up my game. But aside from spending money on things to just make your videos look nice I definitely pride myself in just having a signature look so that when you come, you know, you've you've got the tabletop here. This has been something that I've always used for my reviews, and so you know that you're here. Obviously, the sound of my voice is pretty unique. I mean, how many guys sound like Kermit who are doing gear reviews, really? I mean, not very many. So so that's been another sort of trademark thing, and, and I've been slowly trying to create other aspects of my way of shooting video that are distinctive so like getting the really cool shots of my watches with the uh, shallow depth of field and interesting ways of utilizing a, a tripod's abilities, a video tripod's abilities to pan and tilt and get different kinds of cool shots. These are things that I think add value to my videos and make them more interesting to you. Hopefully they're going to also make the videos have a bit of a more evergreen value so that, for example, if you go to a review and you find the information not only helpful and interesting to you at that given point, like say when you're making a purchasing decision, but you find it you know, attractive or beautiful, that's a video that you might come back to later on. And so I found that I definitely go back and rewatch videos that I just enjoy because I'm a hobbyist at the end of the day and this is something that I enjoy along with you. And so the high quality videos that other channels are putting out, uh, these are the kinds of inspirations that I definitely have. All right, well, I want to thank you for taking the setup tour with me. Again, it's more about sharing your ideas and making the most of the equipment that you have. If you continue to do that, make gradual improvements and find your voice, you're going to have success. At least I'm happy with the success that I have on YouTube here. It's been a fun hobby. I have a great audience, a lot of loyal watchers and viewers, supporters and friends. And I really want to thank you for that. It's something that I always feel is completely gratuitous and I'm always very thankful for your support. As I transition into a new studio, I hope that everything continues to go well here. I have full plans to continue making videos on a regular basis. So I want to thank you in advance for your support. And as always, thanks a lot for watching.